Namaste, greetings to this consultation on green energy transition with a specific focus on Kerala. I am Ashok, a chairman and managing director KCBL. What I intend to do in this brief address, which will go into the inaugural session of the program, thanks to the invitation from EMC and the organizers, is a short pointed uh, thought on uh, how the renewable energy scene is getting integrated to Kerala's uh, demand curve and uh, also how the grid can possibly cater better to the requirements of absorbing the renewable power as well as uh, producing it at utility scale. Now, when you look at the renewable scenario in India, uh, the important trends you can visualize is definitely a secular uh, decrease in the, uh, the long term cost of electricity in rupee terms which has fallen from 2017-18 to 2021-22 from about 3.18 weighted average of all tenders floated to about uh, 2.74, which is about close to a 50 paise drop, uh, which in medium term contracts can make a difference of 100 to 200 crores and in long term contracts even up to 1000 crores of advantage to utilities. Uh, and if the aggressive approach the government of India is taking to renewable energy, like reaching a 175 gigawatt target, which is almost met with, and 275 gigawatt of uh, capacity by 2027, uh, practically in a total production scenario of about 500 gigawatts, renewables will be uh, roughly about 60-65% of the uh, total capacity. But the success will be in utilities in using this renewable energy, both wind and solar, and uh, co absorbing it with the coping costs and providing the uh, sufficient ramping up power during the peak when most of this 275 gigawatt would not be available in the grid across India. Now, this has obvious ramifications for requirement to ramp up the ramping up power, both coal stations as well as hydro stations and uh, also giving a suitable uh, market platform whereby all the variables of uh, power including solar, wind, coal and hydro can be uh, accessed by all the utilities in a more market friendly manner. Now the problem with the Indian energy market is that uh, renewables are now traded at about 8 percent of the total volume traded and uh, essentially the, the, uh, the trading happens with medium and long term contracts affected mediated by the government of India till one point and thereafter through market mechanism through open tenders whereby the utilities have secured long term contracts. Now, a renewable injection is uh, made a must as either must run or uh, uh, essentially making it uh, uh, what you call a obligation of the utilities to procure it to a certain percentage of the total power mix. Uh, that has its own uh, command value, but of course, it is an imperfect uh, market uh, mechanism because uh, uh, utilities tend to buy the uh, renewable power or contract it to meet the obligation, but uh, may not have uh, sufficient demand which would lead to further surrender of the long term contract and therefore would uh, suffer uh, financially because of the injected power. We should keep in uh, mind that uh, out of the 400 gigawatt uh, capacity at the moment, if you look at the post COVID phase, the plant load factors are well below 50 percent and uh, most of uh, coal plants have been for one reason or the other. If not stranded, it had, they have been uh, you know, operating under very low capacity. So, the success in integrating RE into the grid would be through a suitable market mechanism which uh, balances both the need of the utility to remain commercially operative and the need to uh, go towards societal goals, socialized goals like uh, reduction of uh, your carbon output. So, therefore, uh, it is desirable that you move from uh, high carbon energy to low carbon energy. There is no question about that. But the pace, the speed, the required investment, the required market mechanisms are all at the moment present only in parts in the system. Uh, one needs to uh, invent and innovate uh, new and new instruments in the market to sort of make uh, essentially the renewable power available at par with and of course, provide for the coping up costs which are required from the utility side to integrate it successfully and make it available in the grid to a larger extent. Kerala is also at uh, one corner of this challenge because at the moment the utility is having just about uh, 
an RPO obligation uh, commitment is met only to the extent of 14 percent. So, that uh, gives room for another uh, 7 percent more of integration. So, we are looking at the SECI offers uh, which have come by and uh, we might require more uh, an addition of 200 to 300 megawatt this year of uh, solar is very likely. And we are also investing into grid level, grid scale, utility scale uh, solar plants, a minimum of 100 megawatt each floating ground mounted under PM Kusum and otherwise commercially operated. And encouraging rates have been returned by the market. But Kerala rates invariably factor a very high material carting cost and a high labor cost. So, suitable use usually the unit costs are at least 1 rupee higher than the rest what is offered in the rest of India. So, this is also uh, an issue which the utility will have to scale. But if what when I am asked as to what Kerala needs to do at this point of time, uh, I cannot have a 100 percent answer to it because many variables are uh, still invisible. We do not know whether 2022 as promised we will move to market based economic dispatch which could be a game changer with uh, its own inherent uh, risks as the government of India says. If the long term contracts cease to exist and the market becomes the sole mediator of the power market including the power exchanges then a whole different game might emerge. But there are obvious constraints there like uh, legal constraints for instance the, the, the LTAs the uh, corridor congestion issues which are associated with uh, the medium term and long term accessions which have been given by uh, the, the, the transmission corridors. So, these factors will come to interplay, but I believe slowly there will be a move towards more and more of market based economic dispatch than uh, essentially uh, your long term and uh, medium term contracting. So, that is where Kerala has to reevaluate its priorities and see that it has a very vibrant hydro scene with at least 2000 megawatts more of potential. And our bias in the utility is to develop utility scale hydro which will be at which will be required at least at 100 megawatt capacity. The smaller hydros are uh, relatively higher cost and obviously the costs are hidden and operationally they are more difficult to wet to the grid and the moment you have smaller and smaller generators which are dependent upon seasonal water supply and uh, run of the river mode you will find it more and more difficult to integrate it to the grid and operate it at utility requirement scales. So, 100 plus megawatt hydro projects wherever we have which could even be pump, pump back schemes with enough bondage and uh, a certain complement of battery storage has to be immediately and storage will be extremely crucial uh, the crucial uh, wedge which will balance the uh, increased renewable input and the ramping up power will be the storage which you can operate as you ramp up. And the second element Kerala needs to heavily invest on to will be the the potential of providing a bit more of ancillary power because ancillary power stands between the peaking requirement as well as load shedding which the country is facing in uh, various spells in various states. So, you will need ancillary power that is why we have to take a strong relook at our uh, uh, high coal, but extremely essential and uh, indispensable uh, diesels which we have to the diesels and naphthas which we have, which we have to about. Uh, 375 megawatts. So, one potential there will be to either uh, try not very promising LNG is not very promising at the moment if prices fall LNG or attempt a bit of biofuel blending into the extent diesel fuel which is used in both the plants. Kerala has missed that bus because we did not join the research uh, which is ongoing in biofuel blending. If biofuels can be used to, to uh, mix the fuel blend of the ex extent diesel generation cost can plummet by about 25 percent which can be very useful for Kerala. So, this is the way we, we see the Kerala RE market uh, uh, coming up, but a lot of uh, parts of the iceberg are still under the water as uh, the government policy is also emerging and certainly the uh, latent uh, transient cold shock has uh, all, of course pulled the, uh, the speed out of uh, the transition because uh, th there is also a lot of counter thought that uh, coal will remain the mainstay despite 200 gigawatts of solar it could remain the mainstay for the next 25 years as we affect this transition. Uh, I am very thankful that uh, the uh, conference invited me to uh, join it. I am uh, sorry that I am unable to be there physically because of other commitments uh, on the day. I thank uh, Director Hari Kumar and the organizers profusely. I wish uh, the conference all the very best and look forward to learning a lot more from your proceedings. Thank you very much. Namaste.